Hi, I've just updated my Behringer X32 mixer to the new version 2 software uh, because it's got all the nice new real-time analyzers and lots of great new effects and things to play with but I've had a problem from day one on the scribble strips and it's annoying me so much I think it's time to open this thing up get it repaired and make a video so other people can see what's actually inside this in the menu here, you can change all the colours of your scribble strips and write in names, etc, etc. This one, number 7, unfortunately, as you see, if I change the colour to green, fine. Yellow, mm, is a bit off. Blue, fine. Purple, no, that one's blue. This is purple, that one's blue. I've linked these two together as a stereo pair. Obviously, if I go up to red, that's the colour that's missing. And that is what's annoying me so much. Even though it's only a tiddly problem, what's the point of sending it back to the shop and then they send it back to some service centre and then eventually it has to be shipped all the way back to me again? It's going to be gone for ages. And there's no point in it when I really want to just unscrew it, get in there and sort the problem myself. Look how many screws are in this thing all over the place. I think I'm going to have to get in this way. Ah, maybe. Oh, hang on. No, the screws along the top here. All I want to do really is just try and get under the cover here to get straight to the LEDs. Most likely the LEDs will be little surface mount devices that will be under the LCD displays. But we don't know until we get there. Oh well, screwdriver time. Right, I reckon we take the sides off first. Okay. All right, here's the last screw here. Take that one out. There's your end panel. And I put the screws in there. Right, let's see. I think we might need the other end off for a start. Right, I've taken out all the screws in the front, all the screws at the bottom, all the screws at the side, and still it doesn't want to play ball. Aha! Aha! Is she going to move? Mm, this is where the magic is. Now, obviously, there's a ton of ribbon connectors down here that we're going to have to disconnect just to be able to open this up. So, I think I'm going to have to sit it on its back and be nice and gentle with this baby. Ooh, it looks very pretty in there. Right, okay. Ooh, there we go. Right. On to its back. And let's see... What's happening? These side panels contain headphone sockets, which just a little connector there, and out they come, and one on the other side. Is she going to play ball with me? Mm, there's another bit holding that on. Right, and now we can start to split it apart. Oh, oh there's inside the Behringer X32. Right, everything's been nicely glued down into place. All the connectors have got the gunk on them. I've got to try and work out when I take this apart. Am I going to get all these back in? Alright, I'm going to have to do a little bit of snipping here. 
Welcome to the inside of the Behringer X32. These here, all the ins and outs, all the famous Midas preamps and things. Nice big switch mode power supply there, or there, or there, one of those two. Two of them. This is probably a mains filter thing. And this contains a big fan, so I guess that's the power supply for everything. A little ribbon cable up to your colour display. All your ins and outs, headphones, etc. And this is the other side of the faders and the control surface. Our problem is here, behind number 7. Obviously, can't see any surface mount LEDs from this side, so we're going to have to take that entire board out. The problem is, I really wanted to try and fix it with it powered up, which is going to be a bit impossible. But, let's see what we can do. Right, plenty of screws to undo to get this panel off, but fortunately, only four sets of plugs. Now, is it going to come off without all the buttons flying back? No, one piece. Oh, excellent. There we go. And I've only left one piddly little bit of plastic there that goes on these tiny displays. Rather nice. This is the fault under here, which is just a little red LED. But with all these tiny little LCD displays, they each have a red, green, blue LED underneath it. And I'm having the problem now of trying to get under here. Each display has got a tiny ribbon connector which goes back underneath and onto the board. So a little bit of difficulty getting under there, but I'm going to have to fiddle about and put the camera down for a bit. I do like the faders. Very nice how they work. Just an electric motor on a band with teeth on and that sends it up and down. Very nice. Sweet. The problem now is I've got to try and lift this one piece of plastic up that's holding the eight LCD modules. And because the ribbon cable goes underneath there. It looks like I want to move the whole thing in one piece, obviously, but these buttons are in the way. So the handy way of removing them is actually using the pliers closed and then force them apart. This way you're lifting them off the switches, like so. And then they can push back down again afterwards. So they're sort of just clipped on and the little button holds the whole piece on with the lens that lights up underneath there. So we'll just take these eight off first and then pray that this is the way to get underneath those LCD modules. You can imagine, I know this is taking a while to do, just for epoxy LED, but I don't want to have to send this all the way back to the factory and wait and wait and wait for months on end until it's looked at. Now, we can get underneath it. This is the problem, and that looks like a red, green and blue all in one little module. One little LED with all three colours in it. So for some unknown reason that displays no red at all. Hmm. So firstly let's check all the little connections. All looks nice. I might just touch that in with a soldering iron and then pop it back in without the buttons on just to see if it lights up red. If it lights up red then we put the whole thing back together again. If not, uh, well, I don't know. We we'll just have to live without it. Here's a little LED. Now, 
I remember when I first got it, it worked. Then it went out, then I sort of pushed on the screen, it came on a moment, and then went out. So I'm wondering, is it all properly soldered down? You know, this is all just flowed, solder flowed. I'm just going to give it a little bit of solder and see if I can test it to see if it works. If it doesn't, then it's the actual LED likely that's just stopped working. So, just give it a little touch and if I can find it, there we go. All right. I haven't got a finer tip than this. So I'll have to do. Let's heat that up. What I could do is put a couple of volts in to see if I can get the red to light up. But the trouble is, there's so much on this board, I don't know what else I'm going to be sending the power to. Right, I'll pop that back into place. Nice and carefully. I don't want to dislodge any of those LCDs. I'll be trying to fix one problem and creating a new one. That'll do. All right. Just another quick look inside before everything gets put together. There's the big analog devices chips there. Another one under there. Mm, lots of goodies. Uh, where's that thing? I can't see it. Ah, there's the battery down there. I don't know if I can get this thing in focus. Uh, so I can zoom in on that. Oh, no. Autofocus, no good. Oh well, point to it by hand. There's your little backup battery underneath there. Not really in a very convenient spot if you ever need to change it. It's a lithium CR2032, that's common enough and a load of the outputs and your first eight inputs 16 and there's another board for the 32 version now i'm going to try and put this thing back together again right after half an hour work ish let's see if we're going to get the magic smoke or if this thing's going to work Fire it up. Come on, baby, you can do this, please. Aha! X32, loading resource file. And what have we got here on channel 7? It's red! Which means, if we go into the scribble strips now and choose channel 7, we should get all the colours. So, red, green, yellow, blue, purple, sky blue, white. Da -da -da. And that's taken me half an hour-ish to do. A lot of faffing about, but at least everyone got to have a look what was inside this machine. It would have taken me that long to take it back to the shop and get it fixed under guarantee. Oh well, nice bit of kit. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see what else I can find to tear down next time. Fix, tear down, whatever. Hmm.